Hello and welcome to today's talk on XFault, which analyzes the impact of faults on binary neural networks in memristor crossbar arrays with logic and memory computation. My name is Jan Moritz Joseph and we are from RWTH Aachen University. So first let's take a look at the outline of today's talk. I'm going to first start to introduce the background on neuromorphic computing for AI technologies, um, focusing on processing and memory, and then also on giving you insight on what is this logic and memory technology. Then um, XFault is a simulation methodology, so I'm going to show you how we do this, and then also explain our fault model and um, the KPI measurements, how we understand faults and how BNNs are affected by that. Then in terms of results, I'm going to analyze the impact of um, faults on individual uh, logic operations as well on the accuracy of a whole neural network and then finally conclude the talk to draw um, a verdict whether we can use logic and memory for AI computations. So let's start with the background first. So as you all know, today's um, architectures are mainly built as von Neumann architectures where you have separated memory and processing capabilities. And this is limited by this memory bottleneck where you have to ship in all the data from your memory to your compute units and back, which is slow and consumes a lot of energy. And this is especially tedious for um, data intensive workloads such as AI, so we need a different approach here. And neuromorphic computing has become one of these promising paradigms to tackle this issue. The idea of neuromorphic computing, which is basically an umbrella term for many different technologies, is that you want to do something brain inspired. So your brain is very power efficient in AI tasks, so we want to mimic this behavior in our artificial system. And as I said, it's a relatively broad term, so there's a huge plethora of different um, designs and paradigms inside the neuromorphic domain. So you'll find analog data processing, you'll find spiking neural networks inside this, and you'll also find something called computing and memory, which is the topic of today's talk. So the idea of computing and memory is to use novel memory technologies to do the computation inside your memory so you don't have to move the data, which then improves latency, also your computation, energy efficiency, and your privacy. So how does this work? So there are two competing um, approaches to this technology. So the first is to do analog computing and memory here. The idea is, is we use this resistive RAM as a memory technology. So these cells are VRAM cells and they can store a value as a resistive value um, inside them. It's a non-volatile memory where you change the material properties to achieve that. And then you can use digital analog converters to uh, apply an analog um, value here and then use this, um, use Kirchhoff's law, including the resistive value and the summation over multiple of these resistive values that you get um, to basically get the result of a matrix matrix operation. Um, so this is your basic compute paradigm that you need for any AI algorithm and this is what you can find here. And then you convert the data back from analog to digital. And this basically allows you to do an in-memory computation or near-memory computation that's a little bit debatable, but you keep your weight values inside your um, resistive array and then you can apply the um, input activations as um, digital values from the left here. And this is limited by two things. So for one, you need to do this um, digital analog conversion, which is very costly. And second, also you have a relatively low fault resilience because you have to store an actual analog resistance value inside your cells. So the alternative approach is to do logic in memory. Logic in memory means that you take these resistive um, values, but you understand them as a binary value. So you have a high resistive or low resistive state, and then you can link them and you can change the resistive value of a third cell by implementing the two resistive values of this cell with a current spike and then changing this value here of your out operation. And this can model all different kinds of logic operations. I'm going to go into more details here. So this is also what you can see here. So you have in one and in two. These are two resistors, which then can have different values, high or low resistive value, which is your logic operation. And then you can program the third resistor to get your output results. And this is true logic. So logic in memory is true computer memory because your data never leave the memory. And what we found is that the impact of faults on analog compute and memory is well known and you can find a lot of papers on that, but for logic and memory it's not. So let's do this in today's talk. 
And um, so as I said, you have to understand this principle. So um, just to reiterate on this, so you have these three resistors here, which should value in logic operation. And then each of them can have either a low resistive or a high resistive state, um, which gives you a one or zero in your binary operation. And then you have a logic operation that changes the memristive state of a third memristor here, um, following the state of the first two memristors. And so the data don't leave the memory. And as you can see, there are different logic families for that, going to show this in a second, but then you can implement different op logic operations from that, and they need a certain number of memory cells and cycles to do the reprogramming accordingly. And yeah, the two most popular logic families are magic and imply, and um, you can see there are some certain base operations which we call logic gates here, like nor, nymph, and or inside of magic, and then you can build extended logic operations based on that. And this is what this table reflects. So you can do logic in memory. And as you can imagine, that's quite cool for binary neural networks. So yeah, we wanted to understand what is the impact of faults inside these kind of um, systems if you use them for a binary neural network. And this is what XFault does for you. So XFault is an end-to-end -end workflow that starts from any BNN model that we model in TensorFlow using the LARC uh, library. And then we extract the XNOR operations. So the XNOR operations are your basic matrix matrix compute operations inside a binary neural network. So you extract them and um, we run them on a mapped crossbar, simulated crossbar setup. And all the remaining commands are executed natively in TensorFlow. And then we have a crossbar emulator that can emulate different fault models. And this is also what you can see here. So you start with your binary neural network inside LARC and TensorFlow. You bring it into our mapping tool where we map the operations onto individual um, crossbar arrays. Then we have a simulation setup that simulates the whole architecture, including multiple crossbar arrays. And then inside each individual crossbar array, certain um, resistors will have faults inside them. And then we can evaluate the impact on the system. And this is what you also can see here now. These are the different faults that we model inside the crossbar. So we have five fault models here. A stuck at fault, which is basically that a cell is stuck at a certain high or low resistive value. Then a read destructive fault, where the state is um, altered during read operation to get a false um, result. Then a deceptive read destructive fault, which also alters the state, but you can't see it. Then an incorrect read fault, where the correct um, state is inside the cell, but you um, see the wrong, the wrong value. And then a slow write fault, um, where the value is not changed inside your uh, cell um, in the appropriate amount of time. And so we want to analyze these five faults for binary neural networks inside um, logic and memory crossbars. And for this, we developed two simple KPI measurements to understand the impact of um, faults or for the whole logic operation. So we uh, defined quality of logic and impact of faults. So the idea of these two metrics is so basically that you can assess for these fault types how high is your quality of logic? Does the logic operation restrain to the um, actual operation it should have? And then also, if you want to know which faults are especially dangerous, we have this impact of fault metric, which then measures the impact of one individual fault on um, all different logic operations. And we summarized this in this logic gate reliability chart here. So um, we simulated logic gates versus injected faulty behavior. So basically, we took all different binary values that you can have for all of these operations, then mapped them to every possible memristor configuration that you can do physically, and then averaged over the results. We injected individual faults in each of the memristors, and then took a look at what happens. And um, yeah, so basically we execute single operations here. And then you can see for imply and magic different results. And um, yeah, what are the key take home messages here? So for one, the logic families differ um, in their resilience versus faults. And um, you can, for instance, see this just in the quality of logic results here at the bottom, which are different. But you also see something quite interesting um, in addition that for one, these values are extremely close to 50%, which is bad, right? Um, that gets quite close to flipping a coin. So that's, that doesn't look good. So let's see what this um, does with the overall um, accuracy of your neural network. And then you can also see that certain logic operations with certain errors basically completely break the system because you have super high faults above um, 50%. And then also, um, yeah, you can see that at least the XNOR operation has a relatively low fault um, um, rate here. So high, 
acceptable resilience, but anyways, the numbers are quite high, so it doesn't look good for logic and memory for BNNs. And to understand that, we of course then took a look at overall benchmarks, and we took a super simple benchmark and it already didn't look good. So we, we didn't need to do like this very in-depth analysis, unfortunately, so we just took MNIST, which is, I know it's an old system, but it is so simple that even in this case, if it doesn't work, then logic and memory for BNNs currently at the current state of technology doesn't look so good. So we took this MNIST example from the LARC um, example library and used it for imply and magic with different faults. And then let's just take a look at the average. So um, we uh, increased the injection rate, how often faults um, occur, and then on the y-axis here you have the accuracy of your network. And okay, binary neural networks, they don't do too well, right? They are just starting at 75, 80% accuracy here at the beginning, so that's not super high, but then even for very low injection rate of faults, it directly drops below 50%. So here you can see with a few percent of injection rate, we are at 30, 35% here, it looks a little bit better, but still same tendency, and then after 5%, all hell breaks loose, um, we just have an abysmal low injection rate, uh, accuracy for the um, higher injection rate of faults. Um, to summarize, there's a dramatic accuracy loss, and that's a problem that has not been solved so far. So to summarize, we presented XFault, this end-to-end -end simulation framework to understand logic and memory operations for BNNs and whether they work in neuromorphic computing. And um, yeah, to summarize this talk, th they really don't. So our results indicate that the accuracy drops dramatically for BNNs and um, is reduced to below 20% quite fast. And um, therefore, we think that further investigations are needed to improve the resilience of logic and memory for neuromorphic computing.